Hey guys, welcome to another of the Arcane Assist Challenger series. Having just finished my game with John, I am still on Virus 1, which I'm excited about. I'm still on Strakov. So I'm really hoping that I can take Evan off Strakov, because he's beaten me once with him, and I'd like that to, to cease, to, to discontinue. We're about to find out. Fair uh, point. In the event that I lose the game, uh, I'm going to be switching to the Hunter's Grim. <laughs> uh, Not just John can play trolls in this faction. See, I, I'm gonna switch to Harkovich. Seems good. Yeah. Uh, if you enjoy yeah. our videos, subscribe to the channel. Let us know. Um, post something in the comments below. Like us on Facebook. Talk to us on Twitter. I don't know. Those are all things that are cool that you should do. So heading into the lists, we have Strakov and Viros. Tim, you have first turn. So uh, why don't you tell us your list first? Yeah, it's a little bit of a variation on the list that I built to tech for, for the Wormwood matchup. I'm not teching for Wormwood, I'm playing for Strakov here, so I put Imperatus into the list. The bond is nice, but he's a bit of a liability in situations where your opponent can really easily lock down a big character jack. But I like him here. Uh, I'm also playing with six Griffins and a single Chimera. The Chimera gives me access to Stranglehold, uh, to lock down enemy heavies, gives me a couple of potential good Eliminator shots, and it's a really, really important part of, I think, unlocking Virus's full potential. And then the Griffins are just amazing utility jacks for their points. Native Pathfinder, so they can activate before Virus, or don't need mobility on some turns fleet for that extreme 15 inch threat range and they've got powerful charge so that on the feet they can be mat 10 on the charge decent attacks and just really really durable with their shields uh, i'm backing that up with a max unit of uh, infiltrators no ua on them they're basically here for cheap bodies who can get where i need them to be to apply the the feet which is a uh, flank with warrior models and then because i'm playing a retribution army i have three arcanists and Silas wishnalair the seeker you do have a Solus on the Infiltrators. Uh, yeah, that's true, actually. There's there's two Solus on the Infiltrator unit. That's just more bodies, basically. I had a couple of points to play with in all three Arcanists already, and rather than tinkering with my loadout, dropping one of the uh, Griffins into an Aspis, I wanted to keep maximum potential for armor cracking and for the power of the relative pieces in the list. So I just decided to get two more bodies. Occasionally I lose a few too many Infiltrators to make them really effective on the turn I need to deliver them, and I figured just putting a few extra bodies in that unit would help. Cool. So as for my Strakov list, I, I really flip-flopped on what to take against Virus, um, because I'm really afraid of getting my heavy strangleholded, but I think a lot of heavies might be good for taking out griffins and not really suffering much from the infiltrators, not being able to do damage to my heavies. Um, and then taking Orin Midwinter maybe to avoid some strangleholds and ruin in there to also just not be able to be strangleholded himself. Um, and I ended up going with something completely different in the end. I went with Ruin and Behemoth as my battle group, because that's just my bread and butter. I really like it with Strakov, because Behemoth really appreciates Sentry, and Ruin loves some superiority overrun action. But, uh, other than that, I took all infantry. I took two units of Assault Commandos, max, with two flamethrowers each, uh, just because I didn't have the points for the third one in each unit. And I have some black dragons with UA, um, which, while Strakov does nothing specific for them, they can enjoy the feat um, and just be a really hard-to-remove unit at arm 21 on their mini feet if they shield wall the same turn or just immune knockdown, immune stationary. Just, just a hard unit to remove in general. Occultation helps them a fair bit too, especially in the matchups where you can, you know, be afraid they're going to shoot them off the table before they can really deliver their melee punch. Yeah, for sure. Not particularly in this matchup because, A, you only have, what, a gun and a spell on Viros? Well, the thing about um, Imperatus's gun is it's actually pretty good at removing infantry because if you box a model, you light everything within two inches on fire. Right. Um, your assault commandos don't care. And if you occultate your black dragons, they don't care either. So, like, it gives you a lot of invulnerability there. And Bird's Eye does not ignore stealth. Uh, does not ignore stealth. Does ignore line of sight. Okay. So it ignores anything but stealth, basically. Fair enough. All right, guys. I think we're just about ready to head on into the battle report. All right. So, this is my first turn. Everything powers up. I've got, you know, focus on those griffins. Virus casts mobility after casting Inviable Resolve on Imperatus, advances up his 7 inches, makes sure everything's in his control area, and now we're prepared for all of these jacks to run the crazy distance that they do. This is what a virus for first turn does best. I really love how he just dominates 
enormous pieces of the board. You keep all those pieces in his control area, but you fan them out and you just fill the board and you ask the really challenging question of what do you do against this many boxes, this many pieces that are armor 18 in the case of Imperatus, currently armor 20 within viable resolve. And then I've left just enough of a gap between each of these jacks that wherever I need to, I can run those infiltrators to aggressively position and anchor that feat. Um, my chimera is in a spot where it can still operate into a better position. And I'm moving all of the pieces up as much as I can. Uh, deployment in this list is something that took a lot of practice to really ace for me. And I think I've got enough experience to be quite confident in it. It, it has to unpack a very particular way. And the way I deployed, I, I think the unpacking happened really organically. So you've moved up incredibly aggressively. You had a really quick first turn. And I am feeling pretty pretty threatened here. Because now, next turn, you're guaranteed to get on anything you want to if I move at all. Yep. Perhaps even if I don't <laughs> move. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, like, assuming that you just ended your turn immediately right now, Imperatus can charge track of. Yep, and that's not, not fun. Not okay. So... Let me just do the math on that for a second. I deployed at 7, you deployed at 10... Uh, Imperatus is speed six goes to eight charges, uh, 11 sidesteps off the objective is on your caster. Yep. That's absolutely the case. Yeah. Uh, screw that. So I'm going to try to do something about Imperatus. So I figure I can, uh, Imperatus is standing next to an infiltrator so I can overrun behemoth and then cast superiority on ruin, move Strakov up, uh, feet, then behemoth blows up uh, the infiltrator next to Imperatus by shooting Imperatus, uh, overrun Ruin up, charge Imperatus with a free charge, Pathfinder, Ruin. This is a little uh, bit of a mistake on my part. I should have had that infiltrator just about an inch back, base to base with the objective, because it's bunker, it would have given him immunity to blast damage. Um I mean, it's it's minor. I think Evan can still get an overrun with Behemoth just by scattering onto the infiltrators who are inevitably spread out somewhere, but it would have made this particular line of play a little dicier. Now, I'm not I'm not sure if Ruin is going to kill Imperatus here. I know he's at least going to proc Phoenix Field. Just because as soon as I hit with my charge attack, uh, Inviolable's Resolve drops. And suddenly it's dicey even, and I do a lot of damage with that mace um, over over the course of three focus and a free charge and uh, my second initial at dice minus two. So It also helps that you're softening up with Behemoth. I mean, you took that shot on Imperatus and did, uh, what, five damage to yeah. his field? Like that's, yeah. that's a good place to start. Seven field boxes left. Unfortunately, I had to spend all my focus allocating two to ruin and casting two two cost spells, so I couldn't give Behemoth the second full boosted cannon shot. Um, but uh, I got I got some damage in, so it helps. I also managed to remove another infiltrator with some blast damage, thankfully. Um, Every dead infiltrator is one less you know warrior model to proc the feet with. And I. Charge with Ruin. Now... So that feat gives you plus four movement when charging against an enemy in Strakov's control, so Imperatus is within 12, and it also gives you Pathfinder on the charge, right? Correct. So I'm hoping to at least proc Phoenix Field here, and then put enough things in front of uh, Strakov that um, basically make it so that he doesn't just get charged by griffins, because that's not fun. So Ruins just doesn't just uh, triggered Phoenix Field, or Phoenix Protocol, mm -hmm. uh, and does some more damage to his force field. Can't, can't kill him. Uh, but we did the part that I wanted to do, which was at least trigger Phoenix Protocol. Uh, had I had a little more foresight, foresight, I might have put Alton Ashley in this list, but I think the three units of um, dudes is a little more worth it, and also, I don't think it's worth downgrading Behemoth. 
for yeah i mean he's 25 points now which is a an increase since the the change he went up a, one point but i think he's still an extremely effective jack i mean he was taken in every single cator list despite being expensive now he's slightly more expensive and appears in slightly fewer cator lists like i think i think that's the right kind of tweak and i'm, I'm excited to see them do those kind of little tweaks to the game for sure um, so here I'm just going to uh, try some assaults with assault commandos. Maybe put a few more points into Imperatus. Assault commandos have assault. Yes, they didn't last edition. <laughs> I'd just like to make that abundantly clear. It's this is actually kind of an interesting line of play. Um, so what Evan's doing here, I think, is trying to get some more damage in on Imperatus. Uh, it's awkward because Imperatus is engaged in melee, and because of his Phoenix protocol, his movement's not crippled anymore. But uh, because he's charging, and they gain Pathfinder during the charge and that plus four movement against the target in viruses, or pardon me, in um, Strakov's control, you're getting like right up through that rough terrain that was otherwise, I think, a problem for your deployment. Yeah, it, um, it was, because the only model in my list with Pathfinder is Strakov himself. Yeah. The dudes wearing heavy armor are not prepared for the water. They sure aren't. You'd think with Russian winters that they'd be, you know, a little more all-terrain, but apparently not. Yeah, yeah. Strakov didn't teach them how to go through forests or water or anything, because that was a good idea, dude. Anyhow, uh, the rest of these guys are just going to assault the griffins that aren't inside of Strakov's control, uh, just because they can. Maybe put some damage into a griffin. You end up assaulting the griffin who's in the rubble here. Is there a reason you chose that guy? Um, just the direction the charge would take them. Yeah, mostly that. I mean, these charges are mostly about positioning. Although you're hoping you roll some what uh, tens to hit Imperatus because of Starcraft's adventure. Yeah, leader? I need tens to hit Imperatus, and then it's dice off eight, so it's not great at all. But if I miss, I hit ruin maybe on a seven and do dice off ten, which I'm not worried about at all. Yeah, fair enough. Every point of damage on Imperatus at this point counts quite a bit, and the first, you know, 15 points of damage to Ruin don't matter very much at all. Exactly. So, more Assault Commandos on this side are Assaulting Imperatus. I believe I get nine Assaults on Imperatus this time. It's true. Do the Sprays also have Assault? No, the Sprays don't have Assault. They, uh, because the reasoning is... They have gunfighter, not assault, because if they had assault and no melee weapon, they wouldn't be able to charge. Right. And if they had assault and gunfighter, they would get two sprays on the way into melee. That seems too good. Yep. So they don't get assault, which sucks. But it's better than having six sprays from a 10-man unit. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I guess they can have a pseudo-assault if they get into melee by making that spray attack as their gunfighter attack. For sure. Cool. So... A whole bunch of dice get rolled here. And these are all 10s that hit Imperatus, miss Imperatus, 7s that hit Ruin, hit or miss Ruin, dice off 10 on Ruin, do no damage to Ruin. And it happens many, many times. I think I roll, like, over 20 sets of dice here. Oh. Do no damage to anything. Qu quick summary. Once you hit Imperatus, do no damage. Once, or sorry, five times you hit Ruin, do no damage on any of them. Good job, boys. Really, this charge, I think, is mostly about positioning. Uh, you're trying to get them in a good spot to bubble wrap uh, your caster, and you're trying to do damage to, you know, Imperatus if possible. Yeah. So the Black Dragons here do a combination of charging Imperatus for a 13-inch move and a 12-inch run to yep. just kind of screen. Yep, they're just trying to get up there. Um, I've really I've screened the right side uh, really well. Uh, I just didn't have as many models to screen on the left side because I only have one unit of Assault Commandos over there, but I'm still feeling pretty confident because, you know, you have to kill a crap ton of Assault Commandos. Yeah, there's a lot of Assault Commandos there. That's absolutely true. And even then, Strakov's, what, a 15, 16 with 16 boxes? Yep. Uh, he's I think not, 17 boxes, but yeah. I'm not just going to, like, lob a spell into him and have him die. No. Uh, especially because my objective's Arcane Wonder. That's true. Yeah, so it's even harder to access those guys. So, Virus turn two. Uh, everything powers up. 
I've got some awkward choices here. Um, it's definitely a feet turn, and I want to get some things aggressively positioned to capitalize on that feat. I, I can't touch Behemoth, and I can probably kill Ruin. So it becomes, if I kill Ruin, does the combination of his Assault Commandos and his Black Dragons that are all in my face do adequate work to my rather armor skewy list? And the Assault Commandos aren't a huge problem, but the Black Dragons kind of are. The combination of Precision Strike to be able to scalpel out shields and just get more damage more effectively, and their base POW 13 with CMA, means they can do a lot of work to my pieces, including finishing Imperatus. And I can't kill, like, eight of them this turn, which is, I think, the number of them that I need to kill to not be anxious about them anymore. So I decided to go for a little bit of a longer play here. And there's a couple of moving parts in this, so let's talk about them. So the first couple things that happen is the Chimera apparates, and Silas moves up, puts Arcane Secrets on Virus. The plan here is for Virus to keep his full stack, because we've got a plan. A couple of Arcanists are going to activate, and in a moment we're going to see them put focus on the gray uh, griffin in the rubble, who got shot by the... Um, uh, assault Commandos on the, the bottom side of the board here. Who all missed. Who, who all missed him. He's totally untouched. Uh, one of the uh, um, Arcanists who did that actually got into melee with Imperatus, um, which isn't going to, like, that That potentially means I've got a flank availability on, or sorry, on Ruin uh, without having Virus move into there. And then the next thing that happened is a Griffin who is blocking the way for the Chimera to run through uh, fleets itself and advances eight inches to get into a position to make a couple of attacks on some of these screening models. So my positioning here is really tricky because I need a lane to charge strike off because that's part of this plan here. And I need to unjam enough pieces that I'm not taking too many free strikes on the way in. I can afford to take probably one with a griffin just because the way the shield uh, locations are positioned, but I can't afford to take more than that. So now the chimera advances out. The chimera is going to go a little bit wide to avoid ruins melee range. Snuggling up just a little bit. It doesn't have Pathfinder, so it, it's running, and it goes back-to-back -back with Ruin, so it's not engaged in melee at all, and it uh, moves a pretty considerable distance through that rubble and gets just past Ruin. I'm now about four inches from my target of opportunity. Because of what I needed to kill with that Griffin who advanced, I'm actually going to be casting a spell against a model that's in melee. So it's a bit dicey, but I figure if I miss, I'm only going to go two inches, so I'm probably going to kill most of the things I need to, to hit. Uh, Virus walked into melee with flank from Imperatus. He does a reasonable amount of damage to Ruin. I believe it was one box. Yep. Yep. That's, uh, that's you know, Power 14 Weapon Masters to one point. It's probably about right if I don't have a charge. And then he casts an Eliminator onto this target over here. This one I'm using my Arcane Secrets on. Uh, two cost, three spells. That's why you got six focus, Virus. Uh, drops lowest, misses, uh, scatters. It's going to be a maximum of two inches. We just confirm it's four point, like, one. So... He goes two and a tiny, tiny bit to the two, which actually is a better spot for me. Yep, clips the four models in your way. So there's four models in my way. I hit all of them. It's only POW 7 on the blast. So dropping lowest, I need eights to kill Assault Commandos. Pretty reasonable with signs of importance. A little bit better than 50% chance. Um, I kill three out of four. Yep. Which is a little bit better than 50% of them. I can't complain about that. No, you cannot. So Virus has feeded. Place that uh, PG coin right down there. That's my feet token. I've got mobility up. I've cleared most of the lane. At this point, my Arcanist is moving into the rubble a little bit, just getting into range to put the third point of focus onto that gray griffin, the, the dark horse griffin who's going to be handling our charge here. Uh, next, we've got Pathfinder Infiltrators. The one that really matters, we're just checking really carefully his movement. He's got 14 inches of movement. I'm carefully measuring 13 so I've got a little distance to reposition we check the free strikes he's good I just discuss it with Evan to make sure he's comfortable with the movement he is and we're set he is engaging Strakov so now I have somebody who's going to be providing flank the rest of these infiltrators are not nearly as important so they just run up into position um, one doesn't need to be in formation to provide flank so I don't really care if that guy's in command but I happen to get him in command uh, on the reserve option that this doesn't go particularly well for me I put some pieces up to jam 
That's the, the major job of these infiltrators is to, to jam as aggressively as possible. And now I'm looking at this and I know I've got the range. It's a 13 inch threat. I don't need to fleet. I charge 11 and have reach with powerful charge and flank. I end up being mat 10. I'm in viruses control area. So the next question becomes, can I avoid taking that last free strike? So this Griffin moves into position, boosts to hit his halberd attack and kills that last guy. Who's my free strike. I've got a nice clear lane. He charges into Strakov. So mat 10 spent one to charge. Needs a five to hit. Hits on the charge because a powerful charge. Four dice. For some reason, I roll a column. He doesn't have a column. But I roll reasonably well here. And I leave Strakov on what? Three boxes? Three boxes. Three boxes. Buy an attack. Boost to hit. Got to lock this one up. I need a seven. Hits with a seven. Flank for additional die. Pow 13. Minus three. Rolls the six. Finishes Strakov. And that's the game. A quick one. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sometimes they are. I feel like with... How mobile both of our lists are, it's going to be a quick one either way. Just because I can get plus four inches on my feet turn, you are always threading 15 yep. with a ridiculous like amount of damage coming from flank. And Imperatus can get anywhere. Yeah, it's he's terrifying. And he charges for free with Iris. That's his bond. For sure. And And my list also has the combination of overrunning and... Etc. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's lots of lots of elements in this. Anyway, guys, um, quick quick one for this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's a really interesting matchup, as uh, was evidenced by this game. I'll be playing Virus again for our next Challenger series, and uh, I'll be playing Harkovich against Borka One. It's a pretty exciting opportunity. I think that could be a cool game. Yeah. All right. Uh, tune in next week for another episode of Arcane Assist. See you next Monday, guys. Helps them a fair bit too, especially in the matchups where you can, you know. Be afraid they're going to shoot them off the table before they can really deliver their melee punch? Yeah, for sure. Not particularly in this matchup, because A, you only have, what, a gun and a spell on Viros? Well, the thing about um, Imperatus's gun is it's actually pretty good at removing infantry, because if you box a model, you let everything within two inches on fire. Right. Um, your assault commandos don't care, and if you occultate your black dragons, they don't care either. So like, it gives you a lot of invulnerability there. And Bird's Eye does not ignore stealth. Uh, does not ignore stealth, does ignore line of sight. So okay. ignores anything but stealth, basically. Fair enough. All right, guys, I think we're just about ready to head on into the battle report. All right, so this is my first turn. Everything powers up. I've got, you know, focus on those griffins. Virus casts mobility after casting Inviable Resolve on Imperatus, advances up his seven inches, makes sure everything's in his control area, and now we're prepared for all of these jacks to run the crazy distance that they do. This is what a virus for f- first turn does best. I really love how he just dominates enormous pieces of the board. You keep all those pieces in his control area, but you fan them out and you just fill the board and you ask the really challenging question of what do you do? Hey guys, welcome to another of the Arcane Assist Challenger series. Having just finished my game with John, I am still on virus one, which I'm excited about. I'm still on track of. So I'm really hoping that I can take Evan off Strakov because he's beaten me once with him and I'd like that to, to cease, to, to discontinue. We're about to find out. Fair uh, point. In the event that I lose the game, uh, I'm going to be switching to the Hunter's Grim. <laughs> uh, Not just John can play trolls in this faction. See, I, I'm going to switch to Harkovich. Seems good. Yeah. Uh, if you enjoy yeah. our videos, subscribe to the channel, let us know. Um... Post something in the comments below, like us on Facebook, talk to us on Twitter. I don't know, those are all things that are cool that you should do. So, heading into the lists, we have Strakov and Viros. Tim, you have first turn, so uh, why don't you tell us your list first? Yeah, it's a little bit of a variation on the list that I built to tech for, for the Wormwood matchup. I'm not teching for Wormwood, I'm playing for Strakov here, so I put Imperatus into the list. The bond is nice, but he's a bit of a liability in situations where your opponent can really easily lock down a big character jack. But I like him here. Uh, I'm also playing with six Griffins and a single Chimera. The Chimera gives me access to Stranglehold, uh, to lock down enemy heavies, gives me a couple of potential good Eliminator shots. And it's a really, really important part of, I think, unlocking Virus's full potential. And then the Griffins are just amazing utility jacks for their points. Native Pathfinders, so they can activate before Virus or don't need mobility on some turns fleet for that extreme 15 inch threat range and they've got powerful charge so that on the feet they can be mat 10 on the charge decent attacks and just really really durable with their shields 
Uh, I'm backing that up with a max unit of uh, infiltrators. No UA on them. They're basically here for cheap bodies who can get where I need them to be to apply the, the feat, which is uh, flank with warrior models. And then because I'm playing a retribution army, I have three arcanists and Silas Wishnalair, the seeker. You do have a Solus on the Infiltrator. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true, actually. There's there's two Solus on the Infiltrator unit. That's just more bodies, basically. I had a couple of points to play with in all three Arcanists already, and rather than tinkering with my loadout, dropping one of the uh, Griffins into an Aspis, I wanted to keep maximum potential for armor cracking and for the power of the relative pieces in the list. So I just decided to get two more bodies. Occasionally I lose a few too many Infiltrators to make them really effective on the turn I need to deliver them, and I figured just putting a few extra bodies in that unit would help. Cool. So as for my Strakov list, I, I really flip-flopped on what to take against Virus, um, because I'm really afraid of getting my heavy strangleholded, but I think a lot of heavies might be good for taking out griffins and not really suffering much from the infiltrators, not being able to do damage to my heavies. Um, and then taking Orin Midwinter maybe to avoid some strangleholds and ruin in there to also just not be able to be strangleholded himself. Um, and I ended up going with something completely different in the end. I went with Ruin and Behemoth as my battle group, because that's just my bread and butter. I really like it with Strakov, because Behemoth really appreciates Sentry, and Ruin loves some superiority overrun action. But, uh, other than that, I took all infantry. I took two units of Assault Commandos, max, with two flamethrowers each, uh, just because I didn't have the points for the third one in each unit. And I have some black dragons with UA, um, which, while Strakov does nothing specific for them, they can enjoy the feat um, and just be a really hard-to-remove unit at arm 21 on their mini feet if they shield wall the same turn or just immune knockdown, immune stationary. Just, just a hard unit to remove in general. Occultation held against this many boxes, this many pieces that are armor 18 in the case of Imperatus, currently armor 20 with Inviable Resolve. And then I've left just enough of a gap between each of these jacks that wherever I need to, I can run those infiltrators to aggressively position and anchor that feat. Um, my Chimera is in a spot where it can still apparate into a better position. And I'm moving all of the pieces up as much as I can. Uh, deployment in this list is something that took a lot of practice to really ace for me, and I, I think I've got enough experience to be quite confident in it. it. It has to unpack a very particular way, and the way I deployed, I, I think the unpacking happened really organically. So you've moved up incredibly aggressively. You had a really quick first turn. And I am feeling pretty, pretty threatened here. Because now, next turn, you're guaranteed to get on anything you want to if I move at all. Yep. Perhaps even if I don't <laughs> move. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, like, assuming that you just ended your turn immediately right now, Imperatus can charge track of. Yep, and that's not, not fun. Not okay. So. Let me just do the math on that for a second. I deployed at 7, you deployed at 10. Uh, Imperatus is. 